Right, here we have a Backman. Now this is a Backman 24-1. And you'll notice the, the body shell is half off at the minute. And that's because um, since I, ever since I've got it, I've never been able to get the running to be up to my standards, really. If I just set this up to speed step 10 and then bring it to a stop, it just sort of jerks to a stop. Let's do it again the other way and then it just sort of stops dead. Now I have messed with the CV settings and I've messed with them and messed with them and messed with them again and I just cannot seem to get it to want to stop nice and smoothly. If I try and get it moving off slowly, speed step one, it moves away okay, that's, that's, that's alright. And if it's got a train behind it, uh, when it goes around these curves, the local will slow down and the local will sort of judder as well. Now the pickups are all in good order, the wheel contacts are all clean, so that's not the problem. I am convinced it's the, the decoder itself. I'm not sure what decoder it is. I think it's just the stock one which comes with the loco. More than likely a Backman unit. Uh, absolutely fine if you just want your train to go around at 100 miles an hour. But see there, look, it just struggles to get itself going. Which to me says there might be something not wrong with, but might be an issue with the motor and the, the back EMF. So I am going to fit that with a better decoder. First things first, the power to the track is off. I'm just going to take off the body shell. And they have got a space here for a speaker. I don't think that's a speaker. No, that's not a speaker as, as it is, but there is space for one. So what I need to do is replace that chip there with a better chip. So the chip I'm going to be using is a, a Zen V12. I've used these before now. This is the 21 pin version, but it also comes with a tail so you can connect it to an 8 pin loco. So this will work with both really. So first things first, getting the old decoder out, getting the new decoder in. Let's have a look. So for removing the decoder, you just gently prise it up. I've used these here and essentially just work it gently, gently, gently. You don't want to just yank, start yanking it off, otherwise you will damage it. So we'll put that back into the, uh, the spares box because that does still work. But I think we can do better. So here's a Zen. And I'm not even going to program the CVs. I am literally just going to plug this loco, sorry, this decoder into this loco, select address 3 and get it going. And see if it behaves any better than the other one I had. So, all on camera. So just bear with me here. There might be some struggling. I'll try and keep the swearing to a minimum. So there's your uh, there you are. Look. There's actually your eight pin tail, which uh, we don't need at this moment in time. So we'll put that to one side. And here is the chip itself. Now, of course, because this is a a Zen V12, it actually comes with a pigtail on there. So if you want to fit one of their stair lives. From DCT concept you can you get to solder it in you can just literally plug it in there I actually do have a stay alive for this uh, where is it gone it's over here somewhere here we are it's one of the AE model to, um, stay alive so if I want to fit this to this all I need to do is remove the white wire cut the end off that and then connect the blue and black wires to the blue and black wires and then I'll have a stay alive but before we fit that we'll just try the local on its own these do come with some brown out protection anyway, so they're a lot better than most are. So let's just have a little go with this. See if I can uh, get this fitted without destroying anything. So bear with me just a moment. Chaps and chapettes. Looks like it's okay. I don't think that's... I think that's okay in there. There we are, lovely. So you don't want any real resistance or force from those 
from those pins there. You want to make sure they all come through nice and neatly. So there we are. I'll just pop that in there for now. And pop the lid back on too. Get in there, you look really different. There we are. So, for now at least, that'll do. So, here we are. We've got JMRI up. Oh, this is local. What is this? Number three, acquire. Let's see if the lights go on. Are the lights going on? We are. Look at the difference. Look at the difference of that. Straight away. There we are. The lights are working now. So, speed step one. Look how much smoother it is. And I've not even messed with the settings. That was fresh from the box. And notice when it slows down now. Look at how much slower it is and smoother it is. Speed step 10, 15, to zero. Look at the difference. If that isn't night and day, I don't know what is. And that's without any recognition to the settings. So I think that is a well and truly deserved 10 out of 10 for improvement there. Absolutely superb. I'm very happy with that. So, excellent. Really pleased with that indeed. That's superb. Nice and smooth. Adjust this camera ever so slightly. So you can see it going over the point work there. It's creeping over nicely. Look at that. That is superb. And this track work of mine is not the best. Bear that in mind. That is superb. That is really nice. Real smooth. How would you like the new camera angles, by the way, guys? This is the long-awaited camera gimbal I've got, so hopefully things are a lot smoother for you now. But that's lovely, isn't it? That's, I think that's a, a proper pass, is that? I really do. Jolly good. Right, moving on then. Alright, so the worst thing has happened that I can possibly think of. Something has happened to the back of the track there. There's a dead spot appeared from somewhere. I don't know if it's dirty or whether or not. But I know that my only local with that stay alive is dying on the section behind here. So I've had to carefully unsettle the back scene. And this has given me an idea. I was going to originally seal in place the street module but if I do that I will not have access to the back of this track at all so it was dying here the tracks okay and everything and it's a continuous loop so it's always going to get power but thankfully after cleaning it it seems to have hopefully touched wood fixed it up that seems to be working now tracks all cleaned right on the other side the TMD side it's not so bad because I can pretty much reach all of it from back here and I can climb behind it and get to it so not this year I may need to invest in a track cleaning wagon so yeah if you know any track cleaning wagons which actually work let me know in the comments below anyway back to the the, the thing the thing Right, I'm going to dig it up again. Right, folks, so this week, <coughs> as you've noticed, I have this new pipe for pontificacy. The back scene has shifted to the back wall now. This was due to the fact that, as you've probably just seen, there was an issue with the drain running out of power on the back section there. And it took me about 20 minutes to get to it to be able to clean it. So, now I have simply decided to build a, for lack of a better word, a removable tunnel system using, I believe I've got some of this over there, chicken wire. 
But essentially we're gonna latch on to the mouth, little hillside going over the back of the street scene there, the buyers a tunnel or something for those. And then of course full scene there as well. So that's gonna be the mission for today. Without further ado, let's get cracked on. You can see we've got the old chicken wire on the go. Here my point is here, we've got chicken wire there, and we've got chicken wire down there. What I'm having to do is create little arches like here and then I'm going to put more chicken wire on top of it to flatten it out if you will. And then once you've done that it's going to be PVA and toilet paper just to blend it all in. And once I've got the basic carcass done use some modelling compound to get it all solid and then I'll be able to lift it out as well so I'm going to do it in little sections I think so I'll do a little section to about there and then a little back section here then the street scene can go in place okay let's keep going see here one of the cages I've made sort of like a bird shape the idea is put it on the back there and then this bit stays up and gives something for the lack of a bit, the paper mache to stick to you can just see how that's going to work I've already tested the clearance, plenty of room in there, so this is what we're going to be doing now for the next few bits and I'll film that again once I've built a bit more in place, but I think that will do for now. That's going to be the first section there and then once that's set and I know the plan works, I can then build that bit to go across there. Okay, I'm just going to get a bit of a close up now of the situation there. The little bit of masking tape just helps bridge things together. It's not really strong in terms of support. But once I layer up the paper mache on there, that will hopefully start to take shape. And then I can put the uh, modelling compound on there, and that's really going to make it nice and solid. Right then, hopefully this will work. I need to make some PVA um, mixture in this little bowl in a second, and then we can crack on. Just realised, tissue paper might work very well. I've got a little mixture here, look. Water and what have you in there. But I should, I should have used PVA J cloth. I've not got any J cloth, so Becky's donated a tea towel. Donated. Cut it into little squares, dippy dippy, crazy crazy. I've switched to the paper mache method for the second half because it's lighter than the tea towel. I'm not sure how well that's going to work, to be honest with you. I might have to redo it if I do. Fine. Um, we'll see. Right, I've also covered the tea towel with some tea pepper and I've sprayed on PVA water mix just like this. So hopefully now, once it's all set, it'll be hard enough to put the modelling compound over. I don't know if this is going to work, I really hope it does because this has been very labour intensive. Uh, I don't know any other way to do it. I'm not really handy with foam so I know people are going to suggest why don't you make it out of foam, cut it out of foam. I've not got the ability to do that, I've not got the tools or know-how, but I know how to do this, in theory, so this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try and clean up some of the spilt glue, excess glue, as best I can, and we will see how this looks in the morning, I guess. Okay, so, this engineer's siding here, the point on it is in a word knackered so i've got this pico sl point here and as you can see 
it's much, much stronger in terms of the clip. It's also got a less steep angle, so that means when coaching stock or wagons come down here, it's a bit of a slightly steeper angle. I will lose some storage space on the two sidings, but shouldn't be too much. Probably still get the same amount of wagons on there. But I'm not too concerned really losing storage space. So we have warm water with a little bit of IPA and a smidgen of washing up liquid. We're just going to wet the area. Not too far because I don't want to damage this bit here. I will need to cut just a little bit of this hard standing out. Just so I can lift the point. I can redo all this static grass, that's not a problem. But this track's all knackered, so we're going to cut it out. I'll need these later as well. Good cutters, these. They do wonders for my toes. Right, um, that's all down there now. It's starting to work already, as you can see. So we'll give that a couple more minutes just to soak in and absorb the moisture. And then we're going to get the track removing tools, which are pliers. Anyway, we'll get this old track up first. Um, we'll fit the point, and then hopefully, maybe not this week, but in the next coming days, so in time for next week's video, I will have the replacement track. There we are, first bit's out. Now I'm just going to remove this bit and then this point should just slide out. Rug. There we are, I think that can go in the bin. Right, that's all the old track taken off. There's a few studs which are still stuck in here, which will need trimming out before I put the new track down. But it's looking good. The base bond underneath it is still perfect. So I can put a fresh bed of PVA down just to get ready to accept the new track when it arrives. And then I can redo all this. Um, see it work. Well. Right then, let's see how that's got on overnight. Right then, so it's the day after, it is the morning, and at 9.45 last night I decided to do some paper mache as you can see over there. So we've got tea towel and bog roll, just bog roll and just paper mache And that section there is a little bit of a crossover. And as you can see, this is still wet. That we expected that, but the actual paper mache stuff is dry, so it looks like the plan is working. Edward, it's just going to take a, a little bit of time for it to dry out properly. Um, hopefully, two or three days' time that'll be dry enough to work with. The paper mache bit is dry and works now, so I'm thinking of just paper macheing across all of it one because it'll look a bit neater and what have you and it will add strength because that paper is less absorbent but it still absorbs the glue mixture enough for it to work so I don't know all that is really wet the tea towels were probably a mistake here we are more than we learn I'm still going to leave it in I'm not going to for one second pretend I know what I'm doing because that would be ludicrous I'm just going to Free paper mache, all of that, and then hopefully the final results will be better. So hopefully when next week comes, we're going to have the track for the redone goods yard behind me. Not goods yard, sidings. Yes, the signs behind me will have new track on them. That will all be paper mache and solid, and then we can get on with building this thing again 
version 6 I think it is now so in the meantime thank you very much for watching folks I will see you all next week cheers now bye bye